friend welcome to my channel Karina Lu, where we break down the most iconic stars through history if you're not yet subscribed please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload now let's get into this video today we are talking about the highly requested Madhu Bala Madhu Bala was an Indian actress and producer who rose to fame in the post-independence era of Indian cinema a star with a remarkable career spanning more than 20 years. She appeared in over 70 films throughout her lifetime and is widely regarded as one of the greatest actresses of all time in India. In films, she was often billed before the leading man, and web portal Rediff.com mentioned her as a more powerful celebrity than her male contemporaries. Madhu Bala's acting prowess combined with her unparalleled beauty have made her a much beloved figure across India and beyond. Madhu Bala had an innate grace that enabled her to captivate audiences from every walk of life, be it royalty or the common public. This unique combination of talent and charisma attracted the attention of some of the most respected filmmakers in India, leading to inspire roles and in works such as Mahal, Mughali, Azam, and excuse me for some of the pronunciations if I am off. Her performance in the latter two films have been described by critics as some of the finest ever seen on screen. In addition to acting, Madhu Bala also produced three films under her production house Madhu Bala Private LTD, which she co-founded in 1953. This made her one of the highest paid entertainers in India during this time. Her philanthropic work earned her the title Queen of Charity from editor Babura Patel. The media gave Madhubala's donation extensive coverage because it sparked a major controversy due to her religious beliefs. So she was careful to conceal her philanthropy and made her donations under a pseudonym. In 1954, it was reported that Madhu Bala had been secretly rewarding the lowest ranking employees at her studios with monthly bonuses. And in 1962, she donated a fully functional camera crane to the Film and Television Institute of India. While working as a child artist in the mid 1940s, Madhu Bala befriended baby Majabin and another child actor of that time who later grew up as actress Meena Kumari, who I did a breakdown for who had a very tragic life, but they look so much alike. And I always said that there's only minor differences in their appearance. Despite their professional rivalry, Madhu Bala shared a cordial relationship with Kumari as well as other female stars. Before we get into the more details of her life, her childhood, and the sad tragedy that was her life, we have to get into her beauty secrets and diet and some fun facts as well as some controversies within the industry before we get into that that she was well known for. She was indeed called one of the most beautiful women on screen in Bollywood films. Madhu Bala's beauty and physical attractiveness were widely acknowledged and led the media to refer to to her as the Venus of Indian cinema and the beauty with tragedy. However, she stated that happiness matters more to her than physical beauty. From the beginning of her career, Madhu Bala gained a reputation for avoiding parties and refusing interviews, leading her to be labeled recluse and arrogant and difficult. Having been a part of the film industry since childhood, Madhu Bala saw the social scene as superficial and expressed her despise of the kind of functions where only the current favorites are invited and where a decade or two later, I would not be invited, end quote. Her regular photographer, Ram, complained that she lacked warmth and was very detached. Gushan Ewing, one of Madhu Bala's closest associates, however, differed and stated that her friend was none of these. Nadira added that Madhu Bala had not a strain of pettiness of anything small. That girl did not know anything about hate. And Dev Anand recalled her as a self-assured, cultured person, very independent in her thinking, in particular about her way of life and her position in the film industry, end quote. And during these times in Bollywood, because Hollywood is not the only industry with its problems, women were very heavily criticized. If you see my video of Reka, they even called her a man-eating witch because they didn't understand her ways and she wanted her privacy. And they saw privacy as an insult, as we will see. So she really hated the industry, Madhubala, and she really wanted to just spend her time in her quiet space. In the early 1950s, her father Khan began insisting in her movie contracts that she would not be available for interviews without his permission. Madhubala's family was vilified in a bounty put on her head in death shortly after she refused to host a group of visiting journalists on set. 
Until Khan and the other journalists could reach a settlement, Marubala was allowed by the state government to carry a revolver and travel with armed protection. Her relationship with the media remained tense and she was frequently singled out for her religious views and perceived superiority. So it was that bad if you guys think I was joking. I mean, look at what they did to Reka. If you haven't seen that video, check it out also, which was a gorgeous woman, but she went through it with the media. So when I say this, I'm very familiar with Bollywood tabloids as well because I love to know about these starlets and one thing I can say is that no one beats the Indian tabloid when it comes to toxicity against the starlets they have some extreme headlines and they can escalate some things to a level where it's just wow so a lot of the starlets were miserable especially during those days when people didn't know too much about the industry so you know now the more you know about Bollywood and Hollywood you sometimes can get a little defensive and protective for your starlets and kind of you know speak up for them but during those times it was more like a secrecy people didn't really know what these starlets were going through behind the scenes so everybody just mistook Madhubala as being very arrogant and superior and they felt like we made you rich we made you famous we gave you this stardom how dare you not want to do an interview with us they felt entitled to her and they literally put a bounty out on her head to where she had to walk around with a revolver and she had to have armed security with her all the time and she became so fearful even when she wanted to go get ice cream with her sisters she had to wrap her head and wear heavy jackets and had to go through extreme you know cover-ups to just get some ice cream down the street or live a normal life and it made her very very depressed and stressed and I don't doubt that this stress played a role in her untimely death and there was no one coming to defend her except for her other Bollywood starlets and friends that would come and speak up for her but the journalists didn't speak up for her society didn't speak up for her because they didn't really know much about the culture of Bollywood and let's be honest even here in Hollywood a lot of people do that because someone is super famous is and they're super rich how many people you'll see in the comments when a star is talking about how depressed they are with fame etc and they say well you shouldn't have been famous you asked for it you da, da, da. there's always those ignorant loud and wrong comments where people don't sign up for that particular part of fame yes it comes with it but no one knows to what extent it will mess up these people mental health until you're in it you can have a gist of, or an idea you can think probably if you were famous you would just be on an island somewhere if i had all that money i would never respond to anyone etc but in order to keep all that money there are things that you have to do you have to keep working you have to you know money runs out so it, it doesn't work that way and i'm going on a rant so let me take it back it just really upsets me just what they put her through and it makes me really think this is why she died so young that's an immense amount of stress to have people come after you like this despite all of these controversies in the decades following her death she has emerged as one of the most celebrated personalities in the indian cinematic field and her reputation has endured also in polls and surveys she is described as one of india's finest and most beautiful actresses of all time research analyst rohit sharma has studied narratives about madhubala and surmised the reason behind her continued relevancy among new generations today teenagers identify with the insecurities she lived with in her youth like acne and hair issues others related to her for being the poster girl of an era when curvy bodies were considered normal and even sensuous some simply love her for being an excellent actress now before we get into her childhood here's a little bit more light-hearted stuff like her favorite food she loved Indian food of course she loved dal shawal chicken birani she loved eating shot pani puri and kofi she never dieted she just ate how she wanted to her favorite colors were pink black red and white now let's get into her childhood born on february 14th on valentine's day in 1933 madhubala was the fifth of 11 children of atuala khan and aisha begum madhubala's childhood was spent in delhi and she enjoyed a healthy childhood in contrast to her siblings who were either stillborn or died as infants 
Although Madhubala did not have any health related issues, she was born with a ventricular septal defect which could not be treated during that time. Madhubala grew up in an orthodox Muslim family and her father Atula Khan believed that girls should not attend school, yet he taught his daughter Urdu, Hindu, and Pashto himself. Despite coming from a conservative background, Madhubala had always been interested in cinemas and movies since her childhood. She would perform her favorite scenes in front of her mother and entertain herself by imitating characters from the film. Her dream to pursue acting as a career was strongly opposed by her father, but ultimately he gave in when he got fired from his company for misbehaving with a senior officer and then he saw his daughter as an opportunity to you know, like a cash cow. He became one of those parents that soon was forcing her into the industry. At first it was fun for Madhubala, but then it started to become too much when the money started coming in. He became extremely controlling over her life. This opened several opportunities for her though, for Madhubala as an all India radio station, hired her to sing compositions composed by Kurshid Anwar, which she did for several months until the general manager of Bombay Talkies suggested her father to visit Mumbai due to better employment opportunities there. This marked the beginning of Madhubala's journey towards becoming one of the most iconic actors ever Indian cinema has seen. And in 1949, Madhubala played a femme fatale in Kamal Amrahi's Mahal, the first horror film of Indian cinema. And the rest was history, right? In the late 1940s, when she had provided well enough for her family, she rented a bungalow at Pidar Road in Bombay and gave it the name Arabian Villa. She started driving lessons when she was 12 and eventually acquired a Buick, Chevrolet, station wagon hillman and town and country which was owned by only two people in india at the time which was the maharaja of gwalior and madhubala here madhubala met dilip kumar who had recently became successful actor in india the two immediately hit it off and began working together on various film projects their relationship blossomed until 1949 when madhubala's father discovered their secret romance and forced him to break it off due to his disapproval of kumar's muslim background Afterwards, Madhubala soon found herself in another controversial relationship with film fair K.A. Abbas. According to some reports, the two had planned on getting married but ultimately decided against it due to religious differences and the fact that Abbas was already married at the time. Following a two-year long courtship, Madhubala married Kishore in court on the 16th of October 1960. The union was kept from the industry and was not announced until the newlyweds held a reception some days later. Moreover, the couple were discovered mismatched due to their contrasting personalities. Madhubala's heart disease was rapidly worsening after their wedding in 1960. So the newlyweds decided to combine their honeymoon with a trip to London for specialized treatment with the help of her doctor. In London, doctors were so worried about complications that they refused to operate and instead told Madhubala to avoid stress and anxiety of any kind, which was impossible in Bollywood, right? She was given a two-year life expectancy and advised against having children. Her health deteriorated further and she began to argue with her husband on a regular basis. So her husband, however, visited the apartment only briefly before leaving her in the care of a nurse and driver. Despite the fact that he was paying for all of Madhubala's medical bills, she felt abandoned and moved back in with her parents less than two months after the wedding. Madhubala's sister speculated that his occasional visits to the end of her life were an attempt to detach himself from her so that the final separation wouldn't hurt. Madhubala lost a lot of weight and spent her last years in bed. Urdu poetry was her main interest and she used a home projector to watch movies on a regular basis. She withdrew into her own world, socializing with only two other film stars, Gita Dut and Wahida Riman. Almost once a week, she had to get an exchange transfusion. Her body started producing too much blood, which leaked out of her nose and mouth, and she constantly needed an oxygen tank nearby. By the beginning of 1969, Madhubala's health had severely deteriorated. She had recently developed jaundice. At 12.22 a.m. on February 22nd, Madhubala passed away from a heart attack, nine days after turning 36 on February 23rd. She passed away after a brief battle surrounded by family. Madhubala and her diary were laid to rest in Santa Cruz, Bombay at the Juhu Muslim Cemetery. Her marble tome is inscribed with ayats from the Quran and dedications of verses from the Bible. In 2010 though, Madhubala's tome along with those of other industry starlets who passed was demolished to make way for newer graves. Her remains were placed at an unknown location. So. <laughs> that sucks. Now, her husband had this to say, 
I brought her home as my wife even though I knew she was dying from a congenital heart problem. For nine long years, I nursed her. I watched her die before my own eyes. You can never understand what this means until you live through this yourself. She was such a beautiful woman and she died so painfully. She would rave and rant and scream in frustration. How can such an active person spend nine long years bedridden and I had to humor her all the time? That's what the doctor asked me to do. That's what I did till her very last breath. I would laugh with her, I would cry with her, end quote. But it sucks that he says that because her family had other things to say like, sir, you abandoned her. And even she said herself, she felt abandoned by him and he would just leave her with a nurse and go about. And you know, oftentimes when these celebrities pass away, their spouse becomes opportunist <laughs> and some of their family too, but her family, like her sisters, they all always defended her legacy, her image and spoke the truth. And though his quote was heartwarming, it, yeah, according to her, sir, you were not there. You know, you were not there for her. But this just was another tragic tale. And I still can't get over how these journalists had a bounty on her head. That's just crazy. It reminds me of the likes of even like a Princess Diana, how this paparazzi's, um, you know, drove her to her death. Like it's crazy to me. Globally, there should be laws against this. But the people want to consume so much, so much about their starlets that I doubt there will ever be laws about this. And things like this will continue to happen, unfortunately. And it led to a stressful life. I know when people get extremely stressed, sometimes they have nosebleeds, they'll bleed from their ears. It's a lot of weird things that happen from stress and anxiety, okay? So this was a common occurrence for her. And I just don't doubt that it was her life. She was working since she was a kid, providing for her whole family. And her father wouldn't even let her marry the love of her life, Dilip Kumar. And Dilip Kumar was like telling her, you need to cut yourself off from your father. You know, the father only would agree for them to get married if he, he because he was a famous star too, if he would do movies with his production company. So yeah, I believe there was a lot going on in her life. It was just so tragic. May she rest in peace. And comment below who else would you guys like to see? I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. If you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. Until next time.